Colin, thanks, uh, thanks everybody uh, for um, inviting me to take part in um, uh, this uh, online discussion um, on uh, reflection on uh, the exhibition that unfortunately I didn't get a chance to see uh, physically uh, um, the world, worlds uh, without end, the stories around borders. And uh, I really, uh, I think it was pre-COVID time uh, or just around that time uh, uh, when I got uh, uh, the first invitation uh, to join the panel uh, discussion that's supposed to be, uh, uh, let's say, uh, in, um, um, in, in Hugh Lane Gallery in terms of uh, us being physically uh, present there. And unfortunately that didn't take the place. And I kind of reflect on uh, the first email uh, I got um, uh, from uh, Hugh Lane uh, in terms of joining uh, the, the panel discussion, which I was very happy uh, to take part. And uh, I must be very honest and I must continue to be honest because this is the part of my work I got very, very uh, uh, upset. Uh, I got very uh, disappointed, uh, if not disturbed, uh, by uh, uh, the fact uh, that I wasn't aware of the exhibition prior to that email I got. Uh, uh, my upset was uh, in terms that um, among the brilliant artists and uh, that are taking part of the exhibition and uh, a part of the great, I would say, curators, uh, Michael and uh, Sarah, uh, there was not even a mention about um, one of the very important, current, present, 21 year old border that I was unfortunate to experience on my own skin, which is called direct provision. I came from Belgrade uh, in Ireland in 2006, uh, seeking international protection or the refugee status. And I was living in direct provision most of the time in a small town of uh, uh, Balikonis in County Mayo uh, in, in, in direct provision. Um, uh, waiting and hoping that uh, my application will be successful and that I will be allowed to remain in Ireland. I must say that I always get baffled and puzzled about exclusion or continuous, continuous exclusion or exclusionary politics uh, and virtually no presence of direct provision uh, in, uh, in, 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 let's say, wider, uh, in this case, visual arts discourse, but we can extend that to, apart from a very few, uh, uh, I must say, brilliant examples uh, uh, to academia, uh, to other uh, 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 educational uh, uh, platforms, uh, including primary and secondary schools, uh, in this country. And I just kind of ask myself, wh wh why is that? Uh, wh wh why is really that? Uh, wh wh what's, what's, the, what's the state? Wh why direct provision is not being included in the exhibition that the title is Worlds Without End? Semicolon, if you like, uh, uh, the stories around borders. It is absolutely brilliant to see the work included in the exhibition about the border between Ireland and Northern Ireland. It is brilliant to always see work of Drag Dragana's uh, uh, work on uh, dissemination of Yugoslavia. Uh, but if you are talking about history sizing, if you're talking about uh, the moments that are present today as we speak 
in Ireland, we must think really about direct provision. And I have not a problem with this exhibition. I was very fortunate to uh, take a, a, a residency in Paris last summer um, uh, when I kind of continued with uh, uh, my kind of work or other work, it's kind of same similar work. Uh, called Fortress Europe, looking into uh, the, the treatment or the immigration detention centers across Europe. And, and this is not the only case. Uh, if you look at the global detention project that is being initiated in, uh, in, in, in Geneva, uh, if you look at their work, if you look at the work of Close the Camps uh, initiative uh, uh, in, uh, in France, uh, then you will see, for example, a map, you will see a map of Europe uh, with all the detention centers, uh, 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 camps, uh, et cetera, you call, call, call it the way you, 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 you prefer. But if you look at Ireland, right, uh, there is very little there, there is nothing there. Definitely what is not there is direct provision. So the only thing that is present there are airports or several airports in, uh, in the Republic of Ireland that are uh, 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 in, in, in the view uh, something uh, like uh, detention centers. Now we have been building uh, immigration detention center at the Dublin airport that have stopped, that's all going ahead, but to exclude direct provision that in my view is a conglomerate, is, is amalgamation of immigration detention centers that are openly called, uh, let's say in the UK, of, uh, let's say, uh, cages, if you like, for children that Trump have uh, instigated. Uh, uh, other camps, uh, let's say camps in Greece, okay? Direct provision is a system that has all of that incorporated within it, its borders, if you like. To not have that being uh, even um, considered to uh, take part in this very important exhibition is a failure. So whose failure is that? And if you think that me is upset because Asylum Archive is not taking part in this exhibition, then uh, I must say that that's not uh, correct and that's not true and that's not how I feel. Uh, it's not really about that. It's, it's about uh, we as a survivors of direct provision can only do so much. Uh, as part of MASI, which is a movement of asylum seekers in Ireland, we continue to raise the awareness uh, about the current institutional abuse of people living in direct provision. We can only do so much. We really need help, understanding from the wider audience that direct provision is an anom anomaly. It is, without saying much further, a perfect, a brilliant continuation of other carceral institutions, uh, uh, starting with mother laundries, industrial schools, and mother and baby homes. Uh, that, uh, in particular, about mother and baby homes, we have heard uh, a lot about that in the previous uh, uh, weeks. Um, and then, in 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 the uh, uh, and if you read, which I only had the chance, if you read the uh, the PDF catalog, uh, an introduction. Uh, 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 about the director from the director of uh, uh, Hugh Lane, Barbara Dawson, that says uh, that the world without end is a visual dialogue on the impact of borders on the individuals in communities, and uh, and if you go a little bit further and read and and the words that are mentioned uh, there, just the words uh, are Black Lives Matters, 9/11, migration, displaced. George Floyd, etc. Uh, this is all very good. Uh, this is all very, uh, 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 I think, very important. Uh, 
but again, uh, not to, and I may have repeat myself uh, now, not to have um, um, awful, horrible carceral system called direct provision that is a violation of the human rights on so many different levels uh, is, is, is a big problem. And uh, I think that's something that has to be looked into uh, 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 if we want uh, really to uh, maybe learn from our past, uh, learn about our previous carceral institutions, but also uh, maybe speak to the younger audiences, uh, our children, our students, in terms of, uh, uh, you know, how we can do uh, as a society best to uh, uh, approach this, uh, 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 let's say, horrible system and, and, and perhaps abolish it uh, for, uh, for uh, foreseeable or for, for good. Uh, I uh, did call, uh, well, uh, when I was asked by Jessica, what would be the title of this talk? And I did um, uh, say it is asylum archive. And, um, and, and why did I say this? Uh, and I hope you can see this now is, uh, you can see here, uh, this is the project I have started or the platform um, uh, when I was uh, in uh, the room 24 in um, the Red Provision Center in the old convent in Balihonis. And uh, it really started as a coping mechanism at the beginning because I was uh, uh, very frightened, uh, uh, you know, um, and imagine uh, living on 19 euros 10 a week, uh, not being allowed to study, not being allowed uh, to uh, do pretty much anything, living in extreme poverty, uh, being uh, fed, well, living on the forced diet. Uh, but the most important thing I think here is, 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 is that constant fear that every single asylum seeker has is a fear of deportations uh, or fear of being deported back to, uh, let's say, their native country, if you like. Uh, this is uh, really started in 2007. And then when I did Mavis uh, in 2011, uh, I really did uh, kind of one of the learning outcomes uh, uh, was that this is not a singular visual art project. And maybe it is not called Vukashina Delkovic, it is called Asylum Archive. And I try more and more and more to emphasize this is not my archive. Uh, uh, this is the archive of uh, the survivors of direct provision. This is the archive of people surviving at present direct provision. And above all, this is our archive. And if this archive of six and a half, almost 7,000 photographs can do anything. If we ever decide as a society uh, to apologize to the victims, then I'm very, very happy. And I really moving, although being a practicing artist, if that's the word for almost two decades, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of moving away from that um, to um, the, Maybe this is not an art work uh, project. Uh, maybe I am not an artist and I don't think I am. Maybe this is just an artifact. Maybe, maybe this is just a document of abuse of the most vulnerable people, men, women, and children um, who have done no crime, their only crime for being punished, tortured, by the Irish state is because they decided to maybe look for a better life to apply for protection because uh, their lives back there were not safe. And uh, I must uh, reflect on, on COVID um, and I must reflect on um, one thing that direct provision has been in the lockdown for 21 years and to have a lockdown within the lockdown that in particularly may have uh, did happen in, in, in this uh, hotel uh, where numerous amount of people 
contract to the virus uh, that got subsequently closed is just one of the examples of the effects of that COVID or the virus have had on those communities. Uh, very little has been done very little research has been conducted, uh, visual arts research, any kind of research of the impact uh, that COVID had um, in, in these kind of communities uh, in, 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 uh, in, in, within direct provision. I'm aware of the time. Uh, again, this is a very recent work, uh, 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 maybe a couple of years old, two years old, uh, just prior to COVID, uh, uh, where I really, uh, uh, without any romanticizing, without any aestheticizing, trying to document really this architecture of confinement, right? Which is in this case, as this uh, uh, image you're looking, is a Tracy uh, Emergency Accommodation uh, Center in Carrick Macross. And every single of those buildings, if you like, has a layers and layers of uh, trauma, if you like. And, and I can, tell you the story about this particular building, but I don't believe I have enough time, but I would like to, this is another one. Um, 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 I don't have uh, much time to, to kind of uh, 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 elaborate on this. Uh, we really have to be also very uh, uh, cautious about uh, and it was still called the rise of uh, 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 far right. And if we blame Trump only, for example, right, or the United States of America for treating migrants or people trying to uh, come from Mexico, for example, to the States, uh, uh, building the wall, uh, 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 you know, and then the cages without looking into our own neighborhood, then, then we are not very honest. And particularly we are not very honest when we know what have happened in Mobile, which was an arson attack uh, 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 on this particular building that was about to host asylum seekers. Um, and, uh, but I really want to kind of focus on something more now before my time uh, elapse is, and, and, and this is the most important part of the asylum archive, and these are the contributory photographs, okay? The photographs that have been donated, if you like, uh, by people living in direct provision uh, to asylum archive, uh, and I think I personally, after 13 years working on asylum archive, I'm stepping back. Uh, uh, the we can say I initiated uh, asylum archive, I took most of the photographs, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But this is the most important thing that this is, as I said earlier, not my archive, our archive. As I will try to depart uh, from Ireland to other European countries uh, to uh, uh, apply the same visual methodology as per Asylum Archive, I would also like Asylum Archive to uh, be uh, more of uh, this kind of narrative, you know, where people uh, who have experienced it can contribute their, uh, their work. And again, we can talk about the quality of the work. Uh, I think personally, for me, graduated or having a BA in photography, the only difference if this is a difference, uh, without talking that any of my photographs is more important than any of the uh, people who maybe have taken the photographs with their phone, this is not the case. I think their work is more important than mine because we may have never seen this photograph, right? Because nobody is allowed these days to go uh, into any of direct provision centers. I'm talking about pre-corona times and only this we can see the photograph that has been contributed to Asylum Archive. Uh, uh, this is a, a direct provision center in Foynes, uh, all male uh, center. So what is happening there? Uh, and this is just, one of the examples, etc. We, we will never know unless we see these photographs. And I think that's very much it. And, and, and uh, uh, I will spend um, uh, hopefully uh, by, you know, end of uh, uh, this summer when I may uh, be able physically to go and uh, <clears throat> continue 
with the work, uh, which is uh, Forester's Europe now, uh, looking into other carceral uh, um, 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 formations uh, in European uh, Union, or I wouldn't call European Union, I would call Europe, right? Uh, where we may uh, see uh, 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 we may uh, uh, find a conclusion uh, that, uh, 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 that there's slightly different approaches of how to uh, treat uh, people uh, uh, coming to our white shores, but overall it's uh, pretty much devastating or similar on, uh, uh, on uh, most of the levels. Uh, so I'll just go briefly through uh, this work and uh, uh, not only for this exhibition, World Without Ends, uh, and I'm not blaming anybody here, please, just if you can understand this, uh, Michael not deciding to include direct provision, not my work, there's loads of, not loads, but some other work there, and also Sarah not included, uh, not only cages uh, for the children, but also uh, uh, removal uh, detention centers uh, uh, in, in, in the States uh, is very deeply, deeply problematic uh, for me. Uh, uh, I think uh, without acknowledging uh, our present, there's uh, uh, very little uh, uh, we can, um, 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 you know, uh, and if I can use this horrible neoliberal capitalist world progress uh, further, but maybe not progress, maybe maybe move uh, uh, move forward. So uh, uh, I will uh, just show you a few more slides, and uh, I uh, um, probably have talked more than I should have. Uh, if there is any uh, a time for uh, questions, uh, uh, comments, uh, uh, observations, uh, uh, I would be uh, very, very happy uh, uh, to um, um, to answer. Uh, thank you.